Good morning, everyone. And uh, on this uh, special occasion of World Hypertension Day on 17th May today, I am very happy to give you a brief presentation on hypertension, some facts, some myths and what is new in 2022. Hypertension is uh, a silent killer. You do not have much symptoms, but uh, it uh, is a dangerous thing to have. One in three adults worldwide have hypertension. And uh, does it really matter to have blood pressure? Yes, even if you are young, 30 year old, and if you have a blood pressure more than 140, 90 untreated, you are three times more risk of heart disease. Not only heart disease, blood pressure affects your brain, uh, your kidney and many other organs. And 50% of patients of heart attacks have are hypertensives. Now, any use of decreasing it? Yes, studies have shown that even 10 to 12 millimeters of blood pressure reduction, the systolic blood pressure reduction will give you a 37 reduction, the percent reduction in stroke and at about, about 21 production of percent reduction in heart attacks. Some numbers you should know, 120, 80, everyone knows equal to or 120 uh, or below 120, 80 is normal blood pressure and you call a person hypertensive it is, if it is more than 140-90. Some controversy in literature whether it is 130-90 or more as blood pressure as Americans called or 140-90 as Europeans call it. But we will not go into that, we will keep it for another day. But as far as the consensus goes over 140-90 is high blood pressure between 130 and 140 and 80 and 90 is called elevated blood pressure or high normal blood pressure and non pharma psychological treatment like cutting of salt exercise and meditation should be prescribed. But the target is very clear, you have to treat all blood pressures to 130-80, there is no problem in that. Now how to measure blood pressure? This is a thing which has come a lot nowadays that you have to make the patient sit comfortably, his hand resting, his blood pressure cuff at the heart level, no smoking, alcohol, no more smoking, tea, etc. before yeah, he you are taking the blood pressure 3 readings and an average of 3 readings. As far as treatment is concerned, these are the drugs basically used calcium channel blockers, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, diuretics, beta blockers are little lower in the list. And as far as treatment is concerned, now it is very clear, this is the European guidelines followed everywhere that combination therapy works best. So initial is ACE ARB plus calcium channel blocker or diuretic, second is ACE ARB one of them plus calcium channel and diuretic that is three drugs. So first is two drugs, second is three drugs and if it is not controlled on optimal doses of three drugs, it is called resistant hypertension. You add the fourth drug that is usually a spironolactone but remember to see patients potassium is okay. Beta blockers only given in angina, post MI and a stable heart failure. Now talking of some myths in hypertension. Now, first myth is that a mercury uh, BP instrument is the most preferred way. Most of our doctors also think that mercury BP is the most preferred way. No doubt it is very accurate, but mercury and this is a common picture of a doctor taking a blood pressure. The patient is used to this, the doctor is used to this, but unfortunately mercury is out now. The Minamata Convention of WHO in 2013 labeled mercury as a neurotoxin and so all 190 countries signatory to this convention, India is one of them. We have to phase out mercury, BP instruments and thermometers by 2020 with certain exceptions going out to 2030. Then what, what is the preferred way to take blood pressure? It is this automated blood pressure instruments which are now the preferred way. The home automated electronic digital meters or the ambulatory 24 hour BP recordings which is shown on the right side. Now the second myth is clinic blood pressure, if the clinic blood pressure is coming normal, patient does not need any antihypertensive treatment. Yeah, this is a common thing which we all feel, but this is not the right thing because you never diagnose or treat hypertension only with clinic BP alone. There are conditions called masked hypertension and white coat hypertension. White coat is when your clinic BP is more, but your home BP is okay. These don't normally need much treatment except in certain exceptions. But the second one is called mass hypertension where your home BP is more and your clinic BP is normal. Very difficult to diagnose it. You will need an ambulatory BP monitoring to diagnose. When you see a patient with normal clinic BP but with some changes, hypertensive changes in the eye or in the hypertensive changes in ECG, you then send these patients for ambulatory BP monitor 
25 to 30 percent patients will have ambulatory BP, uh, will have mass hypertension and it is a worst prognosis, the, even, the, even more than an untreated hypertension. So, out of office BP measurements are recommended to confirm the diagnosis of hypertension these days. It is not only the clinic BP, you have to, pay, you have to tell the patient to take validated automated BP monitors, the digital ones at home, monitor them morning BP and before sleeping in the night BP and getting up in the morning, early morning BP, make a diary and these BPs are more accurate than the one snapshot of his BP that you are taking. The third myth that we are most, most of the time seeing is that uh, we, we feel that in night always the blood pressure is low. So, clinic BP is okay, why measure BP in the night? There is no point measuring BP in the night. But you will be surprised to know that nighttime BP, if high, has the worst prognosis even than a daytime BP or a 24 hours raised BP. So, nighttime BP is very important to measure. Obstructive sleep apnea, that is severe snoring, which patients do not recognize it as a serious problem, causing uh, frequent night awakenings, type 2 diabetes, benign hypertrophy prostate, awakening you many times in the night, chronic kidney disease, high salt intake, all these will cause a nocturnal BP and it will have a very bad consequences. And this can only be measured by ambulatory BP monitoring and nowadays we are getting cuffless BP monitors. Now coming to the non-drug treatment of hypertension, the non-pharmacological one is the DASH diet. You know this DASH diet is, uh, is more of full grains, lean proteins, you have low dairy fat, fresh fruits and vegetables, low salt and very low sweets. So this is a common diet that everyone prescribes. But what are the other non-drug methods or non-pharmacological methods are you have to stay active, you have to exercise, you have to lose weight, you have to get your vitamin D, B12 okay. You have to take more fruits and vegetables, eat less salt, less than at least 4, four grams a day. That should be the maximum you can take, 3 to 4 grams. But the main thing that is coming now which the American Heart Association is recommending, also recommending is meditation which is a thing of India. But we as doctors and we as patients never ever uh, practice this meditation. Even 10 minutes of meditation can decrease your BP. There are a lot of meditations in the literature that have been scientifically researched for, med for blood pressure like uh, uh, mindfulness meditations or many other like TM and all. But I have researched on Sahaja Yoga meditation. I am practicing this for last 25 years. I will give, I will just spend one or two minutes and tell you a little bit about this meditation. The scientific research is started in Lady Harding Medical College by Professor U.C. Rai, a very renowned physiologist of India, worked as HOD, uh, physiology in Jipmer, uh, Lady Harding and Molana Zad Medical Colleges. They did this, they took 20 patients and made them meditate for 12 weeks, 20 minutes a day and they found the heart rate decrease from 73 to 66, the diastolic BP decreased from 76 to 72, the systolic BP decreased from 115 to 73 and so 115 to 104 that slide got missed and so this clearly showed and many other studies after that showed that this meditation was decreasing your heart rate blood uh, your heart rate your blood pressure both systolic and diastolic and also your uh, also many other things then we did these studies, she is sitting and she did this research on heart rate variability and you see here the people who do non-yoga, they are sympathetic, the red peaks is the sympathetic are so high, the parasympathetic yellow are low, here the yoga have low sympathetic means low heart rate, low BP and a high relaxation system. We did more studies were done at Lady Harding, they showed that uh, blood molecules like adrenaline breakdown product, VMA was less, cortisol decreased, we went around the world to, we have gone around the world to discuss and to uh, tell about this uh, role of meditation in decreasing blood pressure and other things. This United Nations conference in Germany, this was in Heidelberg, the WHO conference. We are sitting here, this is the WHO director, these are the investigators who did research on yoga and meditation, this myself sitting here. Apollo Sugar invited me to do a session on say yoga meditation, which I did with all the doctors. This is the Apollo Hospital magazine in which I wrote that article, Sahaja Yoga for Heart Disease and Diabetes and our uh, respected honorable chairman uh, uh, Dr. Pratap Reddy saw this magazine and liked this article. Thank you very much for your patient hearing and bearing with me. Thank you.